Hey everybody, welcome to Cycle News. We've got another new road test for you today. Today we've just jumped off the 2024, not 2023, the 2024 Triumph Street Triple 765R and RS. Now the R is the base model, uh, that's gonna cost you $9,595 here in the United States. Well, the RS is gonna cost you three grand more, 12,595 bucks, both of which these bikes will be available around April in, uh, in the United States, so check your local Triumph dealers. Okay, so what are the differences? Well, basically, aside from a three grand back in your pocket, there are a fair few technical differences between the R and the RS. The first of which is power. The RS has 10 more horsepower, 128 horsepower at 12,000 RPM, while the RS has 118 at 11,500 RPM. Both bikes, incidentally, have 59 pounds feet of torque at 9,500 RPM. But aside from that, there's a fair few other differences, especially in terms of suspension and electronics and things like that. So the base model, the, the R gets show a big piston separate function forks, which are slightly lower grade in comparison to the traditional show a big piston fork that is on the, uh, on the RS. You also get uh, an Olin's monoshock on the RS, whereas you get a, a show a shock on the, on the R. All of this is fully adjustable, don't forget. Uh, so you're, you're fine there as far as adjustability goes. The brakes are a little bit different as well between the two bikes. The RS model gets the Brembo Styling McCallipers and a span and range adjustable MCS Brembo Master Cylinder as well. Whereas the, uh, the R model gets M4.32 calipers that have been around now for quite some time and, uh, and a different master cylinder. Cornering ABS is standard across both bikes, cornering traction control across both bikes, inertial measurement unit as well across both bikes. Now, in terms of the electronics, the electronics are a little bit different in that there's a different dash. So you've got a bit more of an old school dash on the R, whereas the RS, you have the five inch TFT dash. And that gives you the ability to run Triumphs, turn by turn navigation, do your phone and all that kind of stuff. In terms of the ride electronics, the R model gets four different riding modes in rain, road, sport and track whereas the RS model gets the rider selectable mode. Now the rider selectable mode allows you to get in there and change your traction, your cornering traction control, your ABS, your throttle maps. You can change it to within any of those previous four that I mentioned. So rain, road, sport, and track. Yep. <laughs> you can get in there and say, if you're in rider mode and say like, I want track throttle with no traction control and rain ABS or whatever it is that you want, you can get in there and change it all around so you can really suit the ride how you, how you want. Both bikes come with uh, the up and down quick shifter, Triumph's up and down quick shifter, which is just beautiful, a lovely little piece of kit. So that's basically your main uh, differences in terms of the electronic and engine spec. Well, in terms of the chassis, uh, just because there's different suspension as well, you've got a slightly different steering geometry on the RS, slightly racier uh, front geometry and a 0 0.5 degrees uh, less rake in comparison to the R at 23.2 degrees versus 23.7 for the R model. And you also get a little bit less trail at 96.9 mil versus 97.8 for the R. So the RS has a 10 mil taller seat at 32.9 inches or 836 mil. Although both bikes can also be fitted with a 28 mil lower accessory seat. So that makes it 798 mil for the R and 808 mil for the RS. Another difference is the R model rolls on the Continental Conti Road tires, whereas the RS gets uh, Pirelli Super Corsa V3 SP tires. So more, more track specific tires for the more track specific motorcycle. So I spent most of my time on the road ride on the R model, which I was quite happy about to be honest, because it's a bit more relaxed, uh, not quite as hard edged as something like the RS, although mind you, that's not, not neither of which are nothing in comparison to something like a Daytona, which was just sitting on its nose and had, had you leaning on your wrists. Now, the lower spec suspension is something that over the years I've found hasn't been that great a difference between models. I mean, I remember when I rode the RSV4 1100 that had uh, Marzocchi forks and then versus the electronic Olons, I didn't actually find that much of a difference, to be honest, at least in road riding. Whereas on this one, I found when I was chopping and changing between the two, mo between the two motorcycles, I found the ride a fair bit more controlled on the RS and that's 
where that three grand starts to come in. When you're just cruising around on the R model, it's beautiful. It's very, very plush, it's quite soft. So you have a, a very comfortable ride at your disposal. The front brakes aren't, aren't the best uh, compared to the RS. The RS, I felt, had better feel, more power, just everything was ratcheted up a little bit more. But in terms of the, the engine on the R model, on the road at least, like I wasn't looking for any more horsepower than what the thing had. Like that's 120 horsepower or 118 horsepower is plenty fine for me. Like I'm totally happy with that. Had a really nice sort of response, especially when you put it into road. Had to go on and track for a little while and I was like, oh, it's a little bit, cl not, not clunky, but just a little bit snatchy and I didn't quite like it. So I dialed it back, put it in road and it was beautiful. So I had a very good time on the R model. I did find interestingly though that the front suspension on the R model had a tiny, like, tiny, tiny little bit of, it's almost like a patter. It wasn't, a, it's not chattering, it's nothing, it's nothing like that. It just has a slightly sort of unseated feel, which I couldn't quite put my finger on. And I'm still trying to think of what it is. Like it was, it was just a little bit at higher speed where it wasn't, didn't feel like it was quite connected. When you jumped, when I jumped onto the RS, however, that difference was pretty much gone. I found the RS to be on the on the road at least that was a fair bit more connected front and rear, especially in the back. That Olin shock in the back made a made a quite a big difference. It also steered a fair bit sharper as well because of that that slightly uh, racier geometry and the fact you've got a 10 mil taller seat height, which can get you over the front end a little bit more. I mean, I'm six foot one. I was, I'll take any, any, I'll take any increase in seat height I can get because it then takes a little bit of, takes a little bit of the strain off my knees as well as the backside comes up. Transferring over to the track at Jerez, uh, we went out for the first session, we went out on the street settings, which are way too soft, at least for, for the majority of, of, of us, of the Americans that were out there. It was definitely too soft. We came in after a couple of laps and immediately jacked everything right up. We, a couple of turns of preload front and rear, we were only half a turn out on the, on the shock in terms of being completely max for compression and rebound. And that at least allowed the chassis to hold itself up a little bit better, especially when you got on the throttle initially and then it didn't run wide. But man, in turn, once you got that thing hooked up, what a fun bike that thing is. That engine is remarkable. It's such a fun bike to ride. There is a bit of an issue in terms of downshifting. It doesn't love really high RPM downshifts when you're on track. You've got to be very deliberate in your downshifts if you're trying to use the quick shifter. I actually found it better to use the clutch, if I'm perfectly honest, and that way I could go down a couple of gears and then just feather the clutch out and use the uh, slipper clutch on the way into the corner, which just tend to suit my ride style a little bit better. It's got incredible braking stability. And when you put it in track mode, the thing really does come alive. That that initial sort of, like I guess, hit from the throttle that I didn't love a lot when I was on the road, that translated onto the track where it just leaked out of corners and I was really enjoyed that. So very, very good motorcycle. Now with the electronics, the traction control and the wheeler control are linked and I traditionally don't like those systems. I got to admit, this is a better, this is one of the better ones. It's still not perfect in my opinion. I much prefer to have the system separated because then you can carry wheelies without the thing bumping into what it thinks is traction control and slowing you down. Uh, there is a, it's funnily enough too, when you get on the throttle and you start to spin the bike, it, it has a very slight cut in the, in the traction. It's not a, it's not a very hard cut. So when it does happen, it almost feels just like a little bit of a vibration versus like, you know, when, if you, do hit the traction control and it hits into that limiter, you're like, oh, okay, there's the traction control. Whereas sometimes when I was riding around Hareth, it was almost difficult to tell if it was a piece of chatter or the traction control itself working until you saw the little light flickering on just in the very bottom of the corner of the dash on the RS. So anyway, it was uh, just little nuances and things like that. But in terms of a track bike, man, you're gonna have a lot of fun on this thing. Even just in high bar naked bike style, you're gonna be able to run rings around so many people on super bikes. And that's always one of the best things on a little bike. I always love doing that. So yeah, overall, very cool bikes, uh, very nicely executed bikes, great manners on the road. There's definitely a difference in feel in terms of that grade of suspension between the R and the RS, but now I guess that's what you're paying for. And I'm actually quite pleased to find that because sometimes when you have a big price difference in the suspension is different sometimes it can't actually feel like there's 
three grand, four grand, five grand, whatever it is worth of change. Whereas this one, you really can feel this is the lowest spec, this is the highest spec. So yeah, good on Triumph for doing that. Um, you know, the paintwork on it's beautiful. The LED lights on the RS is just, the, the daytime running lights on the RS is just beautiful. It's a really nicely executed bike. Um, very much a hooligan bike, very much a street bike too. That's what I love too. It's not a racing bike that has its fairings taken off. It's up to you to turn it into a racing bike, but as it is, it's a street bike. and pretty pumped on it it's a it's a cool thing so yeah you'll see these things in your dealership in the next what six weeks or so so get out there and have a look you'll see a few of them running around especially the fact that you can get an rs from 13 grand so good uh, very nicely priced bikes from triumph but yeah they're they're pretty cool things and long live the street triple legacy they've been going since 2008 and uh yeah happy days they're they're still a great bike still are